The next story I wanted to talk about is about a guy named Dave Hayes. He goes by The Praying Medic. Now, I've talked about him before, but I wanted to touch on a new video that just released about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. He has some opinions on her. But before we look at that, I wanted to give you a little bit of a refresher on who he is. So, The Praying Medic has, wait for it, 200,000 followers on Telegram on an obscure app that almost nobody uses except for like Trump supporters. He has 200,000 followers. That is fucking nutty. That is a lot. I just wanted to watch a couple of his videos, give you a little bit of background for some of his beliefs. So this one came out May 2019. He's considered to be one of the most prominent Q interpreters. He kind of goes through like the QAnon posts and interprets what Q, the poster, means by them. Give this clip a watch from 2019, see what he has to say. Q has often said, especially over the last six months, this is going to be the end of the D party. The end of the Democrat party. Okay, now, if you are, you know, average person listening, watching Q, like, what do you mean the end of the Democrat party? The Democrat party is not gonna end. I would say I'm a normal person, and I am, in fact, watching this, and I'm saying the Democrat Party's not going to end. Agreed. Okay, we're all on the same page. Yes, it is. Yeah. And I, I simply disagree, good sir. This is from 2019, so I guess he was fucking wrong, wasn't he? And I'm going to explain to you how the Democrat Party is going to end. What we are going to see in the next year unrolled... Uh, this is a... Prediction, by the way, or prophecy is probably more accurate. It's not a prediction. This is almost bordering on a religious movement. You have to be religious to be a part of this movement, basically. It's a prerequisite. It's a requirement. So I, I'm, I feel comfortable saying that this is a prophecy that he's making about the storm coming. And remember, this is May 2019 when this video was released, and he's telling us that the, the things he's about to describe are going to happen in the next 12 months. We should expect these things he's about to describe to have happened by May 2020, right? Let's keep listening. It is likely hundreds of members of Congress, most of them Democrats, some Republicans, all right, they're going to be arrested and they're going to be prosecuted for corruption. Q said that people in Congress were warned the storm is coming and they were told, if you are playing the game and you are in Congress, when the storm hits, you're going to be prosecuted. Is that what happened? Were hundreds, dozens or hundreds of congressmen actually prosecuted? Of course not. He got real specific with his claims and he even named dates, something that end times pastors learned not to do long and long ago. But here we are, May 2019. They're still doing it. In fact, he just made another prediction not long ago. Do his failed prophecies deter him from making more? Of course not. Do they make him wonder, you know what, maybe I'm fucking wrong about some of this. No. He n that never seems to cross his mind. They saw the storm coming and yeah. they were like, okay, I'm out. I if you believe what Mark Taylor has said, mm -hmm. we're going to see military tribunals. Oh, hold on. Now, this is important, actually. Did you hear that name he just mentioned, Mark Taylor? We're going to be talking about him in another video. I'm not sure if it'll be on the podcast or the main channel, but keep a lookout for it either way. That's extremely relevant and extremely important. So what did Mark Taylor have to say exactly? If you believe what Mark Taylor has said, mm -hmm. we're going to see military tribunals. We're going to see people. There are going to be public executions, and there's yeah. going to be a lot of corrupt people prosecuted. Wow, hold on. So we're not just going to see prosecutions between May 2019 and May 2020, we're going to see full-blown military tribunals, and that is a tall claim. And of course, it never came true. It never came true, and it doesn't matter to him. Kept chugging along like it did. How do you get this far down a rabbit hole? I don't fucking get it. This clip came out mid-October 2021. It's also fairly recent. Give this one a listen. I would just advise pe people, be patient. Hang in there. Wait. Don't, don't be impatient. Don't, don't be upset if it doesn't go at the speed that you want it to. The storm is coming. <laughs> and there is nothing anyone is going to do to stop it. The, the storm is on its way. Yeah, that was another 2021 storm 
prediction. Of course, the storm being that event he was talking about where they all arrest all these politicians and hold military tribunals for corruption, blah, 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 all that other stuff. Yeah, it never happened. Of course. He made a claim about it in 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021. You think he's going to make one about 2022? As a matter of fact, he already did make a claim that 2022 was going to see a massive wave of corruption trials and tribunals and all that other stuff. He already made the claim. The storm is pretty darn close to being here. Uh, The indictments are starting to be unsealed. And I think that 2022 is going to be glorious. That's where his head is at. That's what he's been up to over the past three years. And by the way, the reason that his prediction started in 2018 and he didn't make one in 2017 is because that's roughly around the time that QAnon came into being in the first place. That's around the time QAnon sprang into existence. Anyways, let's check out the next clip by this guy, late October 2021. Please keep President Trump in prayer. Keep Q and the team in prayer. Uh, There were some interesting Scavino tweets, an ace Scavino tweet last night with uh, an interesting Delta. It's on my Telegram timeline if you want to check it out. Uh, Like I said before, I think Q and the team have been observing us on social media. I suspect they're probably pretty proud about the way we've handled things uh, in their absence. I just wanted to give you guys a pretty clear picture of who he is, what he believes, and and the things that he's espousing right now. This one's a little bit older. This is from mid-February 2021. Check this one out. Some people have heard the interview with General Flynn where General Flynn said that there is no plan for the military to step in. I'm just going to ask you some questions, and I want you to just tell me if it's nonsense or if there was anything to it at all. Number number one, did did President Trump ever sign into action the Insurrection Act? No, nonsense. Nonsense. Is the United States military running the country or just doing, is that nonsense as well? More nonsense. Good. Good to hear. More nonsense. There, there's no plan. There's no there are people. Out, there's so many people out there. Is the plan happening? There's no. I mean, we have what we have, and we have to accept the the situation as it is. Yeah, that interview with Michael Flynn that was a pretty big fucking deal at the time. I remember when it came out, all the QAnon people were jumping on it and saying trying to explain why Michael Flynn would say something like that because a fundamental piece of the QAnon ideology is that there is, in fact, a plan that's being orchestrated and controlled by Donald Trump. Donald Trump is trying to get all of these people arrested. He's just waiting for the moment, the right second, to flip the switch, to pull the trigger, to make everything set in motion, basically, and start all of these mass arrests and military tribunals and all that other nonsense. So when Michael Flynn, a darling of the QAnon movement, comes out and says there is no plan, that upset a lot of people, naturally. I think Michael Flynn was probably saying that because he wanted the QAnon people to try to take action themselves. That's my guess. He didn't want them to sit back and wait for somebody else to do the hard work. He wants them to do it. I mean, I have no way of knowing exact. That's just speculation. But anyways, let's listen to the rest of the Dave Hayes video, The Praying Medic, and see what his response was to Michael Flynn saying that. Well, I would like to suggest um, an alternative viewpoint on that. Um, if, If the military had a plan to intervene in American politics. And General Flynn was aware of it. I guarantee you he wouldn't tell anybody what he knew publicly for operational security. Dude, are you kidding me? You just cannot give up on this, can you? This is so sad. The dude that you're listening to and and effectively following around like a puppy and agreeing with has told you there is no plan. Now, accept that as a fact and move forward from there. Seriously, when is this guy gonna give up on it? Will he ever? I don't think so. I don't think this guy, I think he's in it for the rest of his life. I I don't think there is anything that will turn him against this movement. No matter how many failed predictions he has, no matter how much proof comes out that this is nonsense, it isn't gonna matter. He's going to eat it up, hook, line, and sinker, 
no matter what. So that brings us to the next clip. This is the one about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. He had some interesting things to say, so let's give this a listen. This came out early December 2021. Check it out. Say somebody that you think is a good guy that most people in our movement think is a bad guy. Who do you think would, would, would be that person? I've got mine already picked. AOC. <laughs> That's my, that, I, I think she's a good guy too. But anyway, I, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm not I joking been, either. I have been uh, subtly suggesting for ever since she got in office that she's a Judas goat. A Judas goat. Interesting. What does he mean by Judas goat? Fascinating. Subtly suggesting for ever since she got in office that she's a Judas goat. AOC is not that stupid. No, she's really not. Okay, that was a really weird way to say she's not stupid. What was with this guy's eyes? Let's just step back. Why are his eyes bugging out like that when he says that? No, she's really not. That's fucking weird, right? Is it just me? Was that like cringy as fuck? And she is playing stupid. So why is she playing stupid? Why is she playing like this ditzy airhead who knows nothing? Oh, check this out. We're going to watch him formulate a conspiracy right in front of us. You guys ready for this? This is going to be interesting. So why is she playing stupid? Why is she playing like this ditzy airhead who knows nothing? Mm -hmm. Because it's an act. All right, if, she, if, she, if it's an act, then why is she acting? Who gave her the role as an actress? What's her what's her purpose? What is she trying to do? You you catching all this? Somebody had to have given her the role as an actress. She couldn't have come up with this idea herself for any reason, right? There always has to be somebody behind the scenes pulling the strings in their mind. This is so interesting. And it became apparent to me back then, you know, 2017, 2018, that she was um, either volunteered for or got chosen as the person who would lead the Democrats over the cliff, she would take socialism so far and make it so outrageously obvious to normies. Normies, by the way, is a QAnon term. It's a, and pleb, they're two terms that other people use pretty commonly too, but it's like a code word. It's like in the glossary of the QAnon book called the, what is it? The Great Awakening by a, a whole bunch of different QAnon authors, anonymous authors or something. I'll put a picture of it up on the side of the screen here. But anyways, these are all QAnon like words. It's loaded language and cliches that they're using all through here. Obvious to normies that this, this can't work if it weren't for AOC. Yeah, I just want to touch on this real quick. So basically he's saying AOC is like uh, an actress that got into the role to be like way over the top socialist to try to show people how bad socialism is. Is that what he's saying? Or to try to lead the Democratic Party over a cliff with socialism or whatever? Is she even socialist? I don't think she is. Socialism is basically just advocating for workers taking over the control of the means of production and supply. And that's not what I've ever heard her advocate for. She's just trying to push more social policies through, isn't she? I mean, th this isn't making any sense to me. I don't understand. How is she, like, going way over the top with socialism? And I know there's a difference, but he doesn't. How is it that he is saying she's way over the top socialist without crossing into communist? I understand there's a difference between the two, and I know what the difference is. But in his mind, shouldn't over the top socialism just kind of bleed into communism? Why is he saying she's way over the top socialist without saying she's just full blown communist? This can't work. If it weren't for AOC uh, taking the Green New Deal and and you know hyper socialism to the extremes, she has um, probably done more to discredit socialism than anybody I can think of. And I, and I believe she's, she's doing it intentionally. I have a couple of friends who've had dreams that revealed that she was a white hat uh, on our side <laughs> working covertly. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for years, I thought that she was a white hat. Oh, well, dude had dreams. That, that explains everything. Dude had dreams. Now we know it's true. He had dreams telling him that she was a quote-unquote white hat, as he calls it, and that's all we need to know. She's a white hat. There are some real unhinged people in this movement, 
And if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. This is entertaining as hell to watch.